Take out your Bibles. Jai your Bible yo. Let's open to the Gospel according to Mark chapter 8. Marko esule yo munana. From verse 1 to verse 21. Okuva kunyira rusoka paka kulwa dimwe. I know by the time we, shall, we are done, you will understand why we had to read so many and you will be blessed. Amen. Amen. Can we read together in the name of Jesus? In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat. Jesus called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now contained with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their own homes, they will faint on the way. For some of them have come from afar. Then his disciples answered him, How can one satisfy these people with bread here in the world? He asked them, how many loaves do you have? And they said, seven. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. He took the seven loaves and gave thanks. He broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before them. He then set them before the multitude. <laughs> And they also had a few small fish. And having blessed them, he said to set them also before them. So they ate and were filled. And they took up seven large baskets of leftover fragments. Now those who had eaten were about 4,000. And he sent them away. Immediately got into the boat with his disciples. And came to the region of Dalmanutha. And the Pharisees, then the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him. Seeking from him a sign from heaven. Testing him. But he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Assuredly, I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. Beware, then he left them. And getting into the boat again, departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. And they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. Then he charged them, saying, Take heed. Beware of the living of the Pharisees and the living of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, Is it because we have no bread? But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five laws for 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments did you take? And they said 12. Also, when I broke the seven for 
How many large baskets full of fragments did you take? And they said seven. Then he said to them, How is it that you do not understand? Today, I will speak on a subject. Jesus will do it again. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, Jesus will do it again. Now, now that one didn't Turn to the other And tell them, Jesus will do it again. Yes, again that she damaged you calling No, no, I don't know whether you understand. Can you turn to another one and say, Jesus will do it again? Gain don't know your moral or gambe, yes, so I call an attack. It is coming from my heart. Praise and praise to you. For the things that you have done, I'm grateful for your love. I give you the praise. It is coming from my heart. It's coming from my heart. I can tell you now, oh, I shout it now, from the mountain top, I can tell you now, oh, I shout it now, from the mountain top, I can tell you now. Spirit of the living God Even now we thank you Because you were here and we are assured that every word that is going to be spoken, you will follow it to confirm it. We have not come here to listen to cunningly crafted words of men. We have come here to hear from you. Therefore, Lord of glory, we open up ourselves to the entrance of your truth. Lord, use us this evening as tools in your hand to utter these words with clarity, simplicity, and revelation that everyone within the hearing of our voice will live with the assurance that you have spoken to them. And Lord, after all is said and done, may the Honor the glory and the praise. Be brought back to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Take your seats.
Jesus' name. And say, neighbor, Jesus will do it again. Every time I read scripture, I get confounded. By the revelation of the text that I just read. Here we have an account. And looking at it, you may say, why was it brought here? Some people have even thought this could probably have been the same miracle told in another version. But if you look at the biblical account, you're going to find that this is completely different. When you look at Mark bringing us this account, in Mark chapter 6, he talked about Jesus feeding the 5,000 men. Excluding women and children. And later in Mark chapter 8, the account that we have before us, we see Jesus in another location feeding 4,000 men. To help you understand the few differences. The first miracle was performed on this other side of Galilee. It was a miracle performed in the territory of the Jews. Mark chapter 7 tells us that this miracle of feeding the 4,000 people <laughs> happened in the region of Decapolis. Now this was about 10 cities. And this was Gentile territory. So what he did with the Jews, he now comes to the Gentiles and tells them, I'm going to do it with you also. What he did on this side of the territory. He comes to this side of the territory and does the same thing. So that gives you and I a revelation. That if Jesus has done something somewhere, I don't have to be envious about them. I don't have to get agitated about it. If we did it over there, he can still do it over here. If he did it with them, he can still do it with me. If he promoted somebody, he can promote you. If he healed someone, he can heal you. If he delivered someone out of poverty, and it is God that has done it, he will did it there and still do it here Why? Also. Because Hebrews tells us that Jesus he is the same yesterday, today and forever. He comes to John in the book of Revelation and says it is I the one who was who is and who is to come I own history I own the and I own the future. He comes with the title. And he says, I am the Alpha. And I am the Omega. Now, some of us may not understand. But we love to sing the songs. But often we don't get the meaning of the songs. So we come and say, Alpha. And Omega. What do you mean? Omega. What are you trying to say? Alpha. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Omega. Omega. 
Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. So when he comes and says, I am the Alpha. And I am the Omega. He says, if it can be conceived, I am the one. Yes. If it can be finalized, it is I. In other words, if you can construct it, if you can write it, if you can think about it, I can do it. Why? Because I am the Alpha. And I am the Omega. Anything that happens in there, I am responsible. It is me that can do it. It is me that can change its course. It is me that can determine its That's why he comes back to us and says, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, one has not entered into the heart of man. That is what I have prepared. You have not thought about it. He has already prepared. You have not yet conceived it. He has already prepared. It It has not yet come to your attention. He says, it doesn't matter. It's not about you. I have already prepared. For those who love me and are called according to my purpose. So if he has done it somewhere, he can still do it again. He comes to this territory of the couple. And the people come to him. In the previous miracle, this was purely luxury. The people saw him, ran to him. He fed them five loaves, two fish. They ate and had their fill. And he chased them away. He could have told them, go back home. And eat at home. No no one would have collapsed. No, he he just decided to preach and then feed them and send them home. Praise be to God. But in this incident that we see, these are men that have been with him three days. Three days listening to him. Three days in the wilderness. They're not going anywhere. And you get agitated when a sermon lasts more than one hour. Can I hear an amen? Three days. They're listening to the Lord Jesus. And he looks at them. He calls his disciples. He identifies the problem. The other time it is the disciples that said it is the same similar. Now he looks at them and says, you come here. He says, I have compassion on these people. They have continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away, everyone to go to their own houses. They are going to faint on the way. Now these are men listening to Jesus. Hungry but still listening. For you, you get hungry and you say, I'm giving up. I don't understand this salvation thing. You, you, you're 
are not reading scripture. These guys are hungry. For you, hunger just takes you off the trajectory. You, you lose your temper, you lose your cool, you, you lose everything about you. Somebody understands what I'm talking about. And then you come up with these ones. A hungry man is a what? No gamba. Is a what? Is an angry man. So, so, you, so you think it is a license for you to move angry so that everybody gets to understand that you are what? They are not on an Esther fast. They have just decided that it is not enough for you to just feed on bread alone. It is the word of God that is more important. Three days to such an extent that Jesus is concerned, if I send them away, they are going to faint. I don't know when you are just last hungry, so hungry that if you walked, you would faint. But, but I thank God that Jesus is not just interested in our spiritual food. He's interested in our welfare as well. They did not tell him they were hungry. He looked at them and said, these people are hungry. He looked at them and knew that they needed something to feed on. And so he tells them, we cannot send them away. So his disciples now look at him and they say, how can one satisfy these people? How can you satisfy them with bread? Where, where is the bread going to come from? Where are we? We are in the wilderness. They are not even thinking about the city. Remember the other time they said, can we go to the city? Now there is no city being here. Here they are in the wilderness. They are in the wilderness. Not because they have done wrong. They are in the wilderness. Not because there is a generational curse upon them. They are, they, they are in the wilderness. Because they have chosen to listen to Jesus. They are in the wilderness. Not because they have sinned. You, you see, many of us, when you get into a wilderness experience, you think it is the devil beckoning. Some of us give him a lot of credit. For he even he himself gets, uh, gets amazed at the mentions. You see, if it were social media today, the devil would have, I don't know how many mentions. Just look at me. They, of course, the Gen Z, you understand. Gen, Gen Y, Gen X. The others, I don't know. But, but you, you understand when you talk about missions? You, you, I, I don't know. Every time, it's the devil, it's the devil, it's the devil. You're like, even that one, even that one. He loves the publicity. He loves that publicity. He thrives on publicity. He's like social media. He thrives when you talk about him. Even now, I don't want to talk about him, but I've got to drive the point home for you. Why don't you decide this week? I will not talk about him. Say neighbor, 
Decide this week, you will not talk about it. Don't don't even mention his name. Because you see, even when you go to prayer, you're talking about him. You you are going to converse with your father. You have been ushered into the Holy of God. You are at the mercy seat. You are at that place of deep communion with the Father who knows you. And when you get to that point, you are talking about somebody else. When it comes to your praising, you are talking about him. When it comes to worship, it seems you are talking about. Come on. Those are too many mentions you've given him. Just this, just try, just decide to stab him. Of, of that publicity. Just stab him of that publicity. If, if anybody is to talk about him, let them talk about him, not him. But I have decided if I am going to talk about anyone, I will I talk about Jesus. If I am going to talk about anyone, I will I talk about Jesus. If I am going to preach about anyone, it will be Jesus. If I am going to sing about anyone, it will be Jesus. If I am going to give praise to anyone, it will be Jesus. If I am going to make a mention about anyone, it will be Jesus. It doesn't have to be anyone. Why? Because he loved you and gave himself up for you. You, The Holy Spirit is with you to try and conform you to his image. He's conforming you to the image of him whom you should be adoring. Him whom you should be praised. Him whom you should be Glorifying. Him whom we should be magnifying. You see, David the Christ said, Oh, come magnify the Lord with that me. Would you see, it's God, and you ask the question, how is God magnified? Because he's already huge. Everything consists in him. In him we live, in him we move. In him we have our being. How can I magnify him? In whom everything exists. You see, it, when you choose to magnify him, this is what happens. He's not magnified in the world. He is magnified in you. See, the, 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 the reason you are magnifying everything else. See, when you talk about something, you magnify it. When you talk about, and I'm not saying there's no corruption, when you talk about corruption, you magnify it. So when you talk about uh, theft, you magnify it. Why? Because it is magnified in you. So your thought process goes back to process. So when you talk about witchcraft, it is going to be magnified, not in the world, in you. I have told you time and again. It is not what people are saying about you. No. It is what you are saying. So you say to neighbor, what are you saying to yourself? Oh, we have this woman with the issue of blood. And the Bible says she kept 
speaking to herself. Bible and she kept saying, if I only but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. If I only touch the hem, that's all she kept saying to herself. She didn't say, I've been afflicted for seven years. No, 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 no. She did not keep saying to herself everything she had lost, all the money she had lost. No, no, no. Said, All I only need is to touch his That's what she kept saying to herself. The prodigal son, Luke 15. The Bible says, when he came to his senses, he said to him. Self. So neighbor, what are you saying to yourself? You shake them up, say, what are you saying to yourself? Don't, 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 don't let them go into towns. Ask them, what are you saying? What are you saying to yourself? When Jesus saw them, yes, we have to he had compassion on them. He calls his disciples to himself and tells them this is the problem. And the disciples are like, no answer. This is impossible. All they are saying is impossibility. Jesus is saying we need to do something. Yes, we need to do something. Oh, like, uh, this is impossible. This is not going to be done. You see, where there is a problem, it could be possible that God has aligned you to, to be the solution. I, I, I'm, I'm amazed at our theme this year. It is divine alignment. And for many of us, we think divine alignment is God doing his thing and you sitting there to spectate. I'm here to help you understand that divine alignment is not God doing his thing and you being the cheerleader. Divine alignment is you seeing what God is doing. Is you seeing what is on God's heart? And you aligning yourself as a candidate to do what is on God's heart. I will not get an amen for that. But I'm here to tell you that you need to be on the watch for so what is on God's heart. Put up your hand to say, Here, young man, send me. It is for you to see what is on God's heart. Here, young man. I don't know about the classes you studied. But there are these people you did not want to study with. They kept reminding the teacher that they did not have homework that day. So if the teacher was about to leave, they would put up their hand and say, teacher, we don't have homework. There were not people that you celebrated in class. Just look at me if you remember those people. They are the kind who were in class. And they always kept up putting their hands on their So they, they, they are not the people you associated with when you left class. But, but, but if you look around now, there are people who are somewhere because they were aligned. There. Am I speaking to somebody? You see, some of us were on the other side. It is only the grace of God that helped us. But can I hear an amen? 
No, no, you're okay. Okay, Let, let's come back. You see, you see, when we talk about divine alignment, it is you seeing what is on God's heart. And, and you are putting up your hand like that, you know, one, you know the one before the teacher even completes the question, they're like, me, 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 me. And, and, and the teacher has to look uh, and and then, and then even when they see the eyes of the teacher going there, me. Uh, so, uh, so when they see the eyes of the teacher going there, me. So they are putting up when they notice the teacher, me, me, me. me. And and for, for you, you at the back, you're like... So when you see them, the hand going this side, you are... And the teacher is like, you. And you are looking behind. Alignment. Means you perceive what God's intention is. And you forward your candidate. And you say, Here I am, Lord. Use me. Here I am, Lord. Ready to do your will. Here I am, Lord. If you can use anything, here I am. Use me. That is being divinely alive. And this is what I discovered with those pupils or those learners in school. So, somehow they were the teacher's favorite. That they were the ones the teacher would send to bring the books in. Uh, on, on, on Friday, I was with this teacher who were having a chat. He teaches in two schools. I want in two schools, schools I, I won't mention names. But in these two schools, he was telling me these children are different. He says in one school, the teacher is he teaches. He is going to class. All he has to do is tell the children. Or tell the students. Baba student, yeah. I will need a projector. I will need a flip chart. And we shall have our desks looking, our chairs looking this facing this side. And he is out. The next time he shows up for the lesson, the projector will be there. Projector will the chairs will be first where he wants them. Yes. The flip chart will be there in the back. That's one school. And in this school, he says, you don't run after children to go to school. To class. You don't chase children to go for prep. When the bell goes, everybody is out. When the bell goes again, it is time for them to come in. Go take a shower and report to God. Nobody chases them. And this is a boys' school. Secondary school. So he also teaches in this other school. Where he tells the student, take those chairs and put them there. And everybody moves out of the class. So he was asking me, what is the problem? And I told him, it is a problem that is universal. It is everywhere. Some people are so aligned. And he wonders, 
And when people out there see one of these schools performing best, and you know which one. So it's like, these people are cheating, they are not. Abantu we bala bama sumeronga nunga ge gasin ze gali mauli ne baga man dia ba be gezone da si wachiva. Do you know why? Omany why because for them Ubanga bo they don't study to compete with themselves. Bo te basoma kwe sindana. No. Nedda. There is an earliest of schools. Wali yo amasomero. And they know that I am competing with somebody in another earliest. So they, they, they are not competing with the people in their class. No. no. They know there is this other A school. I'm not making mention of names. And they know there is this other student in that A school. That is the one I'm competing with. So if I waste my time now, they are not wasting their time. So they don't have to wait for them to be pushed. And that makes the difference. Back to the point I made here. You see, when we talk about you being divinely aligned, it is for you to know what is expected of you. And you align yourself. Oh, this reminds me of what had happened in Israel. We have this account. And God has rejected Saul as king. And Samuel, who is the prophet, and a dear friend to Saul, goes before God and is pleading with God. And God tells Samuel, I have rejected Saul as king. But he says, I have found a man. A man after my own heart. Who will do my will. He says, I have found a man. After my own heart. Who will do Oh my we. God is looking for people. For men and women. Who can perceive what is on his heart. And be willing to do it. When we talk about divine alignment. These are men and women. Who perceive. What God wants to do. And they are not sitting there to say. We can't do it. They're like, what is it you want us to do? So Jesus tells the disciples, we have to do something. And they're like, how can anyone do this? And Jesus tells them, you know, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. How can we feed these people here? But now, I'm to so what you're doing. You see, if we were in town, we'd do it. But we are in this wilderness. How can we do it? See, God tells you to do something. It's not that he can't do it. But he has chosen you. To be a participant. To this grand project that he is doing. So he asks them a question. He says, how many loaves do you have? And they're like seven. <laughs> so how many do you have? Seven. Says, so okay. You have seven? Says, so sit the magistrate. They have seen this happen before. They have seen it in Jewish territory happening. How then do they come and say, it is not possible? 
Because you think he performed it this side, he can't perform it on the side. Let me tell you something. It, it does not matter where God did it. It does not matter where Jesus did it. If he has done it somewhere, and there is a documentation, and there is a record that he has done it somewhere. He has done it with somebody. It doesn't matter where their origin is. They may be considered the favorite. They may have been considered to have everything aligned for them. But if he has done it with them, he can still do it with you. He has done it before, he will do it again. If he did it, what prevents him from doing it now? He did it with five. All they needed was to say, here is the bread. Do what you did the other time. Do what you did the other time. Do what you did the other time. Blind towards what God has done. What is it that he has done with you? What is it that he has done with you growing up? What is it that he has done with you in school? What is it that he has done at your place of work? You see, some of us have employment that we are not qualified for. So when you begin to open your mouth and speak, people are astounded. They're like, did you pass here and you're like, no. Katibo tandi koko gere bigamba. Bantu babu usanti wa itake jindi no soma kongo gamba neta. Like, was statistics your fortress? Ne wamo gamba anti wa soma koku vya fayo gamba. And like, was economics your base? You're like, oba gamba anti ABM funa wabi soma kongo gamba. Or was it accounting and finance? You're like, not. Oba usanti wa soma koku vya simyo manyoko bala. Bintu vya na. You do what you do. It's like that's what grace does. So if the grace of God has provided for you in this circumstance, if it has been the grace of God that has brought you this far, if you the grace of God that lifted you from where you were to where you are now. What makes you think that the grace that got you out of there to get you where you are cannot take you from where you are to where God wants you If he has brought you this far, he can take you so far. If you are alive and you can testify that I am what I am by the grace of God, I do what I do because God has been gracious to me. Then you stand in a position where you perfectly understand that it doesn't matter where I am. If he did it then, he can do it now. If it was him that lifted me, his hand have not become overweight. He said, some of you think because God carried you when you are seven, now that you are 85 kilos, you are not going to be able to you think he can't carry 87. Just look at me. Please. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> the, the same God that is able to carry you when you're three. 
Katonde ya solo kusi tularulingo ine miyake satu ne kilo zeze ntono. Can still carry your wonderful safe at 100. Achari no busobo zine woboli na chikumi mo kusi tula. The, the same God that looked upon you when you were still the cutie. Katonde ya kutunuli rango chari ka kalunji nyomu na kuzezo. With the make tooth out. Nga nobu obunyo wabu so kabu furuma bu furumi. And you would smile with your face. Ngo so mwenya bu oti baga malai kaiyo. He still looks at you the same way. Oh ya chakula ba mongeri em. Even now. Nerero. When you think you need to put a lot of stuff on you so that you appear good. Ne wobango ya gala kola make up make off or labi keburu unji ye. A chakula ba. A chakula anga chakula ba mboku. Can I hear any man? I'm Pridami in a way younger than you. Praise be to God. Mokama Yeva Ziwe. It does not matter. Since song. If he has done it before, he can still do it. Again. And he will do it. Again. He then tells the people. Sit the people down. Agamba abayigi zomutu zaba antu. He takes the loaves. Na kwa temi gari. Breaks them. Na ajimenya. Gives thanks. Na eba za. He gives them to the disciples. Na ajiwa abayigi zomutu. And they set before the people. Na eba jiwa abantu. What is happening here? There is the principle that happened then. That happened now even. Ne kaka no yeri wo. The loves that he got and blessed did not come from him. They came from them. With the 5,000, it was one boy. Who had the five loaves. And fish. We don't know where the seven came from. It doesn't matter where they came from. The Point is, he is in the business of multiplying. And he, it takes somebody to offer something for him to use. It doesn't matter where it is. So often when we talk about you, being able to bring to the Lord. Some of us, the first thing you zero in is money. Right now, Pastor is going to talk about money. You're second guessing me. And yes, I will talk about money. Because money is important. Money answers all things. But let me tell you something about money. Money is a test. What you do with money qualifies you for the next stage. How you perceive money tests what your heart is made of. David, the man who was after God's heart, when it came to giving to God, he says this in the scripture that I want us to read. It is found in First Chronicles. Chapter 29. This is what the scripture says. This is the point where David is giving to the Lord. In chapter 29, he comes to offer to the Lord with his people. And then after he is giving to the Lord, after, sorry, he's gathered everything that they're going to give to them. Let's open our Bibles there. He utters these words. Verse 14. No, let's start with verse 13. First Chronicles chapter 29. Verse 13. 
says, now therefore our God. We thank you. And praise your glorious name. And verse 14. He gives the reason why. He is in that mode of glorifying God. He asks a question. He says, but who am I? And who, what is my people? This is the King James Version, okay? It says, who am I and what is my people? The New King James, proper grammar would state, who am I and who are my people? He says, that we should be able to offer so willingly. Who, who, who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly? Say, how, how, who am I that we should ever be so willing to give as much as this? So, so what he's saying something here. He's saying whatever we have given, nobody has compared us. Nobody has pushed us. Nobody has performed any gimmicks with us. This we have done willingly. But he's asking a question. Who are we that we should come to this point? That we give so willingly. And he says, why? He says, because all things come from you. And it is of yours that we are giving to you. In other words, he's saying something. He's saying, Lord, Mukama. this is what we are giving to you. But what we are giving to you is already yours. We are only custodians. But who are we that you bring us to this point? Why do you ask us to give you what is yours? He comes to a point in his life where he understands that what I have is not mine. What I have is his. And if he's asking, who am I? That I should give willingly because this is his. That is a man after God's heart. That is a man who notices that this is what God wants done. And he divinely aligns. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. See, they, we don't know where the seven loaves came from. But these are men or whoever had them say, if Jesus needs them, there you are. When it comes to us, what is it that you bring to the Lord? When it comes to your time, it is his time. How are you allocating that time? For his use. See, for the football lovers, and I'm not tr trying to offend anybody. Yeah. The, the games, most of the games you watched at the weekend went into extra time. They went into the penalty shots. And they're watching the penalty shots. Some of you watched until the very last shot was done. Praise be to God. 
You know who won. I, I'm not going to hear to Kati trump you who won. Ya ni ya gobe na egwe ya ba deyo You know. Now Uchimani. somebody is turning who who. Wali wa huza ndabi ya nteke dati ya ye kwe. You look at me. Kati tisigalo ngon tono ye. You know who won. Omanyi ya gobe ye. But do you know how long you sat before that evening? Na yo manyi watuli de sawa meka. The game time plus the analysis plus the half time. Ogata obu de dachi ke chenda, no gatako extra time, no gatako ava baba yo geta kumopida, no gatako obu dobula lao. That is God's WhatsApp to you to tell you you can have that time of communion with me. Kati katonda yo geta nawe kakana gamato obu de singo obu umpa de netu ogeta. Unsonga zo. Oh, when have you dedicated that time? Oh, and, and, you know, this is time you should be sleeping, but you decide to sleep out of the way. This time is. Oh, what do you know? 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 Where you are in the presence of God and you're not looking at your watch. Nah, eh. Oh, do you know what do you know? What do you know? What do you these guys sat three days. No one was looking at their watch. No one Gamba, Njala, Teria Gamba, Esau, would they would eat up like your Lord, your servant here. Agamati, your ghetto would do our Mokama. That's what prepares you for a miracle. Your willingness to sacrifice. To give of your time. To give of your talent. To give of your resources. To ask like David, who am I? That I should give so willingly. That's how you divinely align. That you get to understand that if God is giving you something, there is more in store. If He's giving you something, there is more in store. If He's giving you something, there is more in store. If He's giving you something, there is more in store. If He's giving you something, there is more in store. If He's Telling you to let go of what you have. There is more. Walio Binji Muterekero Jatola. If you can only let go of that. Singabino, Ovia Jaco, Nebibaco Jebigenda. There is more for him. Wario Evidala Okua. He can only give you to the extent that you can let go. That's why he breaks the bread. He gives it to the disciples. And the disciples give it to the people. The only reason the disciples have the capacity to come back is because they have passed it on to someone. And now they have capacity to receive from them. So he then breaks and gives to them. And they set before the people. The reason they have the capacity to come back to him is because they have let go of what he has given to them. What is it that you have that you are holding on to and saying this is mine? I like Lord oh, Jesus, you also understand. Uh, our brother Prosper is here testifying. It was a wonderful testimony. Uh, I'm I'm like, like, this was the Holy Spirit speaking. You see, when we talk about giving, a lot of people get annoyed. 
But you can only receive if you can only let go. The disciples were able to feed the 4,000 because they let go what Jesus put in their hand. If Jesus did it before, he can still do it. And he will do it again. Stand up on your feet. We shall continue from there next week. Say neighbor, <laughs> if Jesus did it before, he will do it again. He will do it again. He will do it again. And how I wish it is your prayer this afternoon. You say, Lord, do it again. But do it again with me. Say it again. Say, Lord, do it again. But do it again. Say it again. Lord, do it again. But do it again with and as sure as God lives, he will do it again. And, and he will do it again. Somebody raise your hand to the floor. Talk to him. This is your moment for you to talk to him. Whatever your life has been, for many of us, your time is all about you. When you say Kalakata, you're like three hours doing what? It's all about you. You're being selfish. But if you learn to give your time, your talent, your resources, everything about you and allow your life to be a channel of blessing and not ask what is it that I get but say how can I be a blessing to someone and you come to that point where you say I am aligning yourself myself to what is on your heart if you can use anything, Jesus, here is my life. Take it and use it. Here are my thoughts, Lord. Take them and use them. Here are my feet, Lord. Take them and use them. Here are my hands, Lord. Take them and use them. Here is my life, Lord. Take it and use it. Here are my resources, Lord. Take them, Lord, and use them. For your glory, Lord, for your honor, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. We have seen from your word that whatever you have done, you can still do and you will do it if only we align ourselves to do what we must do. Therefore, Lord of glory, we come before you with repentant spirits. Ask for your mercy, Lord. Ask for an enlightenment of our spirits. Ask for a new perspective of life. Use our lives. Use everything that we are. Use everything that we are. That our lives will be a reflection of your majesty, of your glory, and of your power. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.